Hi there everybody, Augie Kennedy here with Super Awesome Calculus and welcome to chapter 4. Um, this is section 4.2 where we're going to be talking about the mean value theorem. But before we do that, last time we talked about critical numbers, minimums, and maximums and what we're going to do now is go over the big problem that I gave you. Now I need to apologize, the problem kind of sucked, I'm aware of that. Um, so, but realistically, the only thing that was really important was that you got the mechanics down. So here are the mechanics. The question was, between 0 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius, the volume V in cubic centimeters of 1 kilogram of water at a temperature T is given approximately by the formula V equals 999.87 minus 0.06426T plus 0.008. 5043t squared minus 0.0000679t cubed. Find the temperature at which water has its maximum density. Now there are a few reasons why this sucks and why this is a terrible question to give you, but it seemed kind of interesting. First thing is if you don't know how to compute density, there's no way that you'd know how to finish this problem. In case you're wondering, the way to compute density, density equals mass over volume. Okay? Second thing is that that's a very cumbersome equation that doesn't really work out too well. But the idea is the same. We're figuring out a maximum here. We're, it's min-max. We're figuring out a max. So we just need to identify what we're looking at. If the, um, what we need to do is we need to set a derivative. We need to find a derivative here. If v equals that whole big long thing, I might as well need to write it. I assigned it. I guess I have to write it. 999.87 minus 0.06426t plus 0.008504t squared minus 0. 0. 0.0000. Nope. 0679t cubed. If that's the way that looks like, well then v prime is going to equal the derivative of that using the sum difference rule that's 0 minus 0 0.06426 because that's the derivative of that plus we use the power rule here, bring down the 2, multiply this long decimal by 2 and that gives us 0.0170086t minus 0.0002037t squared. That's the derivative of the function. Now, the proper density would be 1 kilogram, which is 1,000 grams, over V. And the way to figure this out is to find out when the derivative equals zero. The problem is, is that it's not a pretty number. The best way, the way that I choose to do this is plug and chug. You could, if you had a graphing calculator, this is a very easy function to analyze. But I try to avoid graphing calculators, so I plug in one, it doesn't work. Plug in two, doesn't work. But getting closer, Plugging in 3, it's, it's closer to 0, and plugging in 4, it's just, it, it, it's a little under, it's very, very close to 0. So the answer is some number that's pretty close to 4. It turns out that the answer is 3.9665 approximately degrees Celsius. That's, that's approximately the, the densest. But... If you, if you at least uh, knew to take the derivative, and if you chose to actually try to figure this out and you got some number close to 4, good job. I, I apologize, and I promise the next one won't be as awful. Alright, so today we're going to talk about something called the mean value theorem, which is actually a really useful thing that we're going to look at fairly often in calculus. But before we look at it, I like how the book introduces a theorem called Rolle's Theorem first. So here's Rolle's Theorem. Alright, let's let f be some function. That means 
this is f is some function, I don't care what it is, as long as it conforms to the following three hypotheses. One, f is continuous on closed interval a to b. All right, that's the first thing it needs to be. The second thing that function needs to be, f is differentiable, diff period differentiable, on the open interval a to b. So it doesn't necessarily need to be differentiable at its endpoints, but it needs to be differentiable everywhere else. And three, f of a equals f of b. So in other words, on the y-axis, the two points are going to stop at the same point. What that says, the output's going to be the same. What that says then, therefore, there is a number C in AB, open interval, such that F prime C equals zero. In other words, what it's saying is that on any continuous function that's differentiable between its endpoints, if f of a equals f of b, at some point, there's going to be a horizontal tangent line. That's what that's saying. And, and doesn't it make sense that way? Doesn't that kind of make sense? I mean, let's look at it. That's Rolle's theorem, by the way, spelled with an E, R-O-L-L-E's theorem. Okay, let's look at it. It's pretty easy to understand this. All right, here's, here's A, here's B, okay? Here's F of A, but we remember according to Rolle's theorem, F of A equals F of B, so it's also F of B. So there's A, F of A, and here's B, F of B. All right, now what this is saying is that since these are two are the same, at some point, there's a horizontal tangent line. Well, that's, that's pretty easy to see, by the way. That's supposed to be straight. I know it's not really straight. Um, I kind of suck at drawing lines if you haven't figured that out by now, but the idea, the passion is there <laughs> to draw a straight line. So, obviously, if it's a straight line connecting the two, Rolle's theorem holds. Then there exists a C. In fact, there exist infinitely many C's. That could be C, that could be C, that could be C. There's infinitely many C's where F prime C is going to equal zero. That's very obvious, just by looking at that, at that line. But, let's look at it this way. If these two are going to end at the same spot, what if we do this? The graph could look like that. Well, there still exists a C right there where f prime c equals zero. And the graph can look, it can look crazy. It could be, ooh, like a sine wave type thing. Well, once again, here, there are several c's. There, 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 there. Several c's where f of c equals zero. That's Rolle's theorem. Now, Rolle's theorem is going to help us prove, or not really prove, because I'm not going to prove the mean value theorem, but what I'd like to do is write out the mean value theorem and then understand what it's getting at. Okay. Here is the mean value theorem. The MVT. Very important theorem. I suggest you memorize this. F is a function, just like Rolle's theorem. F is a function that's going to satisfy these two hypotheses, okay? One, F such that, one, F is continuous on AB, and two, F is differentiable on open AB. In other words, doesn't need to be the endpoints. If that's the case, there exists a C in AB 
such that f prime c, the derivative of c, equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Pretty powerful stuff. f is a function such that it's continuous and differentiable between its endpoints. If that is so, then at some point there is a c such that f of b minus f of a over b minus a is the derivative. That might sound a little bit confusing, but when we look at it graphically, it'll be very, very obvious what the mean value theorem is really saying. What it's really saying is that let's take this graph right here. All right, here's, here's, a, here's a function. Uh, one point there, one point there. That's going to be B. We'll let that point be A. Woo! Okay, that's a function. Now, here's the thing. Is it continuous on A to B? Yes, it's continuous, there's no breaks. Is it differentiable between A and B? If we don't view that as a vertical tangent line, which, I, which it isn't, um, I didn't intend it to be, then it is differentiable everywhere between A and B. Let me make this a little bit less, ooh, whatever. That's, that's not a vertical tangent line. You're not seeing that. So, okay, continuous and differentiable between A and B. What this says is that we can see that between A and B, B minus A, between there, that is the slope, right? That is the slope of the line that would connect these two points. Well, that's the chord. What we're looking at, what we're saying is that that line that's connecting those two points, somewhere in this function there is a C, that's going to have a tangent line that exactly matches that chord right there. So, what we can see is that right here, up at the top, we're going to find a C whose tangent line is the same. Do you see that? In other words, if we were to just make a line, y equals x, or y equals like negative x, or some variation of that, it would look like that. But on this function between A and B, a direct line would look like that. Mean value theorem says that somewhere in this function, there is going to be a tangent line that is exactly the same slope-wise as that line would be. So we can see that that's basically like Rolle's theorem. Rolle's theorem is, in fact, just a special case of the mean value theorem, where A equals B. Now, what else can we find? We can use other examples. Here's A, here's B, all right, we see that? God, that's awful. There we go. All right, once again, A and B not, collect, not connected by a straight line, but it's continuous and differentiable, so from A to B would be that line. What it's saying is there's going to be a tangent line with that same slope. And sure enough, we can see two of them. Here's a C. And it looks like here's a C. Yeah, it's basically the same. Here we go. That's the same slope. So that's what the mean value theorem is kind of getting at. Uh, another way that you can write the mean value theorem, if you want to, when you're going to be using uh, examples, you take f prime c equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a, okay? One thing that you can do is you can also use some algebra to manipulate it and say that f of b minus f of a equals f prime c 
B minus A, which really kind of, that really emphasizes what we're saying about the slope, right? So for instance, what this is saying is that if our function f of x is x squared on 1 to 4, okay? On 1 to 4, f of x equals x squared. There's 1, 1, 2, 3. Actually, let's make it 1 to 3. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There we go. What we're saying is that this, if this is our f of x, this parabola right there, that parabola part, if that's our f of x, x squared on 1 to 3, closed. It's continuous. It's differentiable. What that's saying is that at some point there is an f of c such that fb minus f of a over b minus a, in other words, f prime c, there exists a derivative that has the same slope as this chord right here. So it's that f of b, what is 3 squared? It's 9. Minus f of a, what is, this is a, this is b. What's 1 squared? 1. What's b? It's 3. What's a? It's 1. Or it's 8 over 2. There exists some derivative, some number, whose derivative, or whose slope, is 4. That's what it's saying. So, that's the mean value theorem. Now I'm going to give you a, uh, a practice problem for it. It's kind of interesting and it's going to make you think, but it's not so ugly. If two runners start a race at the same time and finish in a tie, can you prove that at some point during the race they have the same speed? So I'd ask you to prove that at some point during the race they have the same speed. There's a little bit of a hint here. You might want to implement some terminology. The book says consider f of t equals g of t minus h of t. So f of t equals g of t minus h of t, where g and h are the position functions of the two runners. All right? So you'll, you might want to make a graph of the progress of the runners, indicating a tie, indicating starting position, Go for it. All right, well, with that being said, thank you very much for joining me for the mean value theorem. Next time, we're going to learn about how derivatives affect the shape of a graph. Uh, should be a jolly old time, so I'll see you later. Bye-bye.